tell us how you found us and how you heard about the Fempreneur Marketing Podcast. I am a podcast junkie um, and I'm always looking for other new great female. I love female obviously based podcasts because we all have such great, amazing stories. And Mm -hmm. so we just kind of stumble upon it, finding more female people to follow and listen to. Awesome. And you have had your own business for how long now? Uh, It's been about three, three and a half years, something like that. Awesome. And I see that you work in a clinic with other practitioners. Tell us about where you work, what it's like to be you these days. For sure. So I um, run True North Movement, which we do massage therapy, acupuncture, aesthetics, uh, all that kind of fun stuff. So I have another massage therapist that works with me. I have an acupuncturist. We have an esthetician. And I have a woman who does Reiki and ionic foot baths. And then obviously myself. So yeah, it's, it's a great spot. We're up in Muskoka, so it's not a bad place to live at all. Uh, we are on beautiful Lake Joe, so we have an amazing scenery. Um, we're actually located at the Sherwood Inn. So the Sherwood Inn, we're a separate business, but it's great because they have amazing food and we get to partake in that sometimes. And Aww. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a great location. It's great to be able to like in the summers, you get to sit out on the patio right by the lake and just enjoy the sunshine. And it's amazing. I've heard really good things about the Muskoka area and I've always wanted to check it out. So now when I finally do, I'll know someone there that I can go and visit and uh, pamper myself at the same time. So this is awesome. Yep. You're always welcome. So tell us about you before you were a fempreneur and then what led you to taking the big risky step of, you know, being your own boss. So there was many years that led up to it. Um, I actually, before I was a massage therapist, I went to school for hotel and restaurant management. And I kind of, uh, funny enough, fell into the salon and spa uh, world, you know, doing managing and that kind of thing. And I, I did the, you know, service traditional spa, but then I also did more of the corporate retail side of it for, for professional products. And I really enjoyed it. Um, but it was frustrating when I put in all this work and effort and I just had so much zeal and energy for what I was doing. And you never really feel like people appreciate you as much as you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and, and then, I mean, I actually started managing my first spa when I was 19, 20 years old. So (laughs) people, you know, like people didn't take me seriously at all. They just kind of treated me like a kid and uh, it, it was it was tough at first because you know I I I knew I knew what I was doing, and I mean whenever you're a manager you're also a leader in a perfect world. So I had already you know had leadership stuff in the past. I coached uh, some volleyball in high school, and you know I tutored in college and all that kind of stuff. So I already kind of had that. Um, zeal for people and leading people and really leading people into the best parts of themselves. Because I find that people get in the way of themselves so much, right? Like, you know, and sometimes you just need that person to draw it out of you. So I would constantly tell people like, if I see something in you, I'm going to push you. And I, you know, sometimes you're going to feel like I'm being tough on you, but I don't invest energy into people. I don't believe are worth it. Like if you're not worth it, I'm just going to, leave you alone to do your thing. And I'm not really going to engage because it's not worth my energy because there's nothing to pull out of you. Whereas someone to hear that, like if someone's willing to invest their time, their limited time and what, yeah. And I can see how that really lights a fire under people's butts when you say that to them. So I love that leadership quality that you have. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I think I always knew eventually one day I might work for myself. I just didn't know what that was ever going to look like. And it wasn't until I was managing this spa for uh, an owner who was like so hands off. He didn't know anything about the spa industry really. Like he knew very limited. I feel like he kind of bought it because he just thought like spas make a lot of money. Um, And they, they can, but you you kind of need to know how to invest that money and where to go. And like you, you do need some vision around it. So I was the vision and I mean, I created spreadsheets for him and I was tracking, you know, year over year and I was doing all of these things to try and make sure that we were on this track together as much as we could be when he wasn't really engaged. And um, when I was thinking about going back to school for massage therapy, 
because at the time we had massage therapists and estheticians at the place I was working. Um, I was thinking about going back part time and I was kind of talking to him about it. And he made a comment about how if I went back to school, he wouldn't probably hire another manager because we didn't really need a manager. And it was the moment that I was like, what am I doing? Why am I putting my energy and time into this when clearly it's one sided? Mm -hmm. Building someone else's dream. So I went back to school and I knew that like when I was done school, I didn't know where or how mm -hmm. or whatever, but I was like, I'm, I'm going to open my own place. And I don't, I don't know what that's going to look like yet, but that's, I'm, I'm going to do it. So I moved up to Muskoka after school and I stumbled upon this location, which is an amazing location. And I literally took it at the beginning of COVID. <laughs> So I had no idea what was going to happen. Um, and I kind of thought to myself, worst case scenario, it doesn't work out and I go back to working for somebody else, you know? But if I don't try, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to regret it. Yeah, worst case scenario is actually that you don't try and you regret it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's really, I love that. I love the worst case scenario people because I, I know a lot of people that stay frozen in fear of what if. They don't let themselves go to that what if and realize that it's really not that bad <laughs> yeah, and that exactly. not trying is worse. So that's so, and not everyone's born with that and they have to be trained by someone probably like you or I to, to think like that. Um, and I love that you're out there running a business, bringing fempreneurs into your business, giving them leadership skills, believing in them, pushing them beyond what they think they can do. I think that's so inspiring. So thank you for, for doing that. Yeah, you know what, I um, I had some women, I, I saw a lot of powerful women in the spa industry, and I was always like, hmm, they have something really cool. I want to, and I, every woman I met that was doing something in a challenging way, I was like, I want to be like you, you know, like, how do I, how do I do that? And I realized that it's, it's just a mindset. You're just like, I'm just doing it. Like, it, it, you give yourself another choice. You just, I'm doing this. Good for you. That's amazing. So you seem to be uh, possessing some very, very strong leadership skills, as we've already sort of outlined. But what I'm wondering is, where did that come from? Tell us about your childhood. Like, how did your parents or whoever raised you come to raise this, this ass kicking fempreneur? Um, so I love my parents. They are lovely people. However, um, they essentially instilled in me one of the most dangerous things, which is not feeling like you're enough. Mm. So it can be beneficial, but, and it is what drove me to never feel like what I was doing was good enough in mm. a way that made me want to overachieve and push myself further. So it, it is positive in that sense. But as I've grown older, I've recognized how it limits me as well. And so, uh, you know, like I, I did well in school and I, I didn't really, you know, it came to me somewhat easily. Um, so it was always one of those stories of like, if it's a B plus, why isn't it an A? And, you know, that. Yes. And again, they, they meant the best for me. But I recognize now that it started to skew this opinion of my value was only based on how well I was doing. And that can be really toxic and that can be really challenging. And I, I mean, again, like it has its positive. Sure, you're going to be driven, but at what cost? Mm. And I started to realize that my cost was going to be my sanity because I was n always going to be pushing myself and I would burn out. And as a massage therapist, you can physically only do so much massage before you're going to hurt yourself, before mm. your hands are going to wear out. And I realized pretty early on when, cause when I first opened, it was just me. I was looking for staff, but like, I didn't know when I was going to get staff. I didn't know when that was going to happen. So I was just like, I was going to do everything. And like, it was the pandemic. So in theory, the fall winter is slow in Muskoka and it kind of quiets down, but it wasn't because everybody was staying up because the schools weren't open. Nice. So I was so much busier. So I was just trying to do everything. And it was, you know, I realized like if I don't, create better boundaries for myself um i'm gonna burn out and i'm not gonna be able to reach any type of success because i can't do anything yeah. so yeah i mean again like I, I i played sports and i think sports are really great for kids because it teaches teamwork and it builds those leadership qualities um 
So I think that was really, really beneficial. And again, it was, it was that idea that I need to always be doing more, which can be positive, yes. um, but not always. Yeah. Do you have a team of fempreneurs or even just anyone around you that helps you kind of um, identify when you're hitting that ceiling where you need to maybe dial it down a little bit? Or is it like, who, who are your mentors? Who are your inner circle of, of cheerleaders? Uh, so I have a few really amazing women. Um, funny enough, there's there's a few different in different areas. I have a good, good friend who luckily is also a counselor. She works more in addictions, but um, she is also a workaholic. So we often have conversations about our workaholism. Um, wow. And we kind of keep tabs on each other. And like, it's again, she's doing so amazing in everything she's doing as well. And it's great to see that. But it's always a conversation of, okay, so what have you done for self care today? Like, how are you managing these things? Like, when are you going to be taking a break? Because you can't keep going at the speed. So I have her in my corner and then I found these, this amazing group of women that um, actually anybody can join because we do mostly zoom calls because of COVID, but we're starting to try and do some in-person events. Uh, and it was started by a few women who are all close knit as well. And it's um, women empowering women. And it's a group and we do different zoom calls based off of different topics. And we just try and support each other in different ways. And, you know, it's a great group where it's a safe space to be able to say, like, I'm struggling with this or this is what I want to achieve. And like to have those great, strong women cheerleaders in your corner. Wow. And you you came across this group just from women that you already knew or like, how did that? Yeah. They invited yeah. you to come to yeah. a session and you got in there. Oh, wow. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Funny enough, it was our real estate agent that I then became friends with that then kind of invited me because we stayed in contact. And then we've been friends ever since. And she's such an amazing, powerful woman. And she just invited me into this world with her other girlfriends that are the same. And then it's just grown and grown and grown. And like, it's a great community now. So do you have fempreneurs or maybe budding fempreneurs um, come to you for advice on how to open a salon or a spa or a wellness center? Do you have them ever come to you and say like, how did you actually start this business? Like, you know, what are you using to accept payments? How are people scheduling their appointments? Like, do you ever have women come to you? Or I guess maybe not just women, <laughs> but you know. Yeah, say, it's, it's actually not just women. It's funny because I find I, I get it more in massage while I'm meeting people for massage because we'll get chatting and they'll be asking questions. And we literally like I just we kind of bounce business stuff off of each other when it's other small business owners, because the reality is when you're a small business owner, you don't have that corporate net to use for resources and everything. So I actually am also on the board of directors for the Chamber of Commerce for Muskoka Lakes. Nice. And uh, that's one of the ways I got connected into the community as well and got connected with what's going on in business. And it was a way for me to give back and be able to help other businesses as well. So, you know, we really do a lot of networking. And when it's one of those things where you're like, I need a website built, who do you know? We have a list of people. And if it's something like I need, you know, snow plowing, like there's, there, it could be anything that you need and we'll help connect you with the right people. So it's, it's a great, great way to build and meet community that way as well. Wow, oh, that's fantastic. So let's talk marketing for a few minutes here. I'd love for you to share with fempreneurs some of your best marketing wins, uh, either a strategy that you discovered by accident that you continued to utilize or something that you recently discovered is working for you. Maybe, you know, might not work forever, like anything marketing wise that you can share that's working for you. So I'm going to be a little bit boring here. Um, I actually am a little bit old school and I have built my business honestly through referrals. Creating yeah, an amazing customer experience is one of the easy, well, I shouldn't say easiest, but the least expensive ways to get yourself out there. And, you know, I'm in a small community, but it doesn't have to be a small community. Like your reputation, your name goes leaps and bounds and so if you can connect with people and let them know that like i'm trying to build my business and mm -hmm. if you're okay being a little bit vulnerable in that and just say like i'm i'm looking to build my business and mm -hmm. if you enjoy what i do like please let other people know 
you'd be amazed at how many people are in your corner being like, yeah, so-and-so, you guys see so-and-so. And like, then my cousin and my friend and, you know, and like all of a sudden I have people and I always ask, of course, you know, like, oh, how'd you find us? And they're like, oh, I know so-and-so. And I'm like, oh yes, how's she doing? Cause I haven't seen her in a while. Aww. So it's, it's one of those things that's so underrated. I think there's so many things you can pay for, for advertising. And there's so many things that you can do for marketing that spent takes a lot of your time and a lot of your energy. And I think it's great to be creative and we all have that piece of creative in us that we should utilize, but don't discount referrals and don't discount, you know, your existing clients because they are the ones who know your services. They know you. And if they like what you do, they will share you. I love that. That's and anyone can do that, right? It doesn't require any technology skills doesn't require you to know how to make a reel or, you know, it's so, it's so, um, like you said, it's old school, but it's simple. And that's the beauty of it. It's like, and that's how I started YYC Fempreneurs. I started teaching a marketing school and it wasn't perfect, but I, I just asked them, I was like, Hey, do you know any other Fempreneurs who are struggling with marketing that could use not only some tips and tricks, but a team of women around them. And they were telling all their friends and they were sharing, you know, different things on their social media and tagging me so that people could find, you know, this, this marketing school that was so amazing that it was honestly like pretty clunky at times because I was figuring it out <laughs> as I went. But um, I do love the power of, of um, being a new business. I remember when I, my previous business, well, I still have it now, but before it was my only business, it was in the financial services industry. And I knocked on doors in town mm -hmm. and that was the company's system. And as uncomfortable as it was at times, I built so many st strong friendships because those clients mm -hmm. always become your friends. And mm -hmm. um, just from knocking on doors and, and I was, I was legitimately new to Cochrane back then, Cochrane, Alberta, where I live. And so when I was knocking on doors, I was like, I'm new to town and I'm starting yep. a business here. And we kind of had this script that the company provided and they wanted us to ask. Um, the question was, if you could change one thing about Cochrane, what would it be? And people freaking loved talking about that, right? They're oh, like, yeah. wow, yeah. listen. Yeah. <laughs> and I was actually new to town. So uh, some of the things they were talking about, I didn't even know or I never thought of before. I discovered businesses and different things through those conversations. Um, and the thing back then, probably similar to your story about working for someone else, back then I was doing it because it was part of building this business underneath a corporation. And even though I didn't realize it at the time, but I was building my own brand, um, I felt kind of icky having those conversations at times because I didn't feel like it was coming from my heart. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like my motivation was to serve my motivation was to check the boxes of the things I was supposed to do. You know, mm -hmm. so the beauty of being an entrepreneur is that when you're having those vulnerable conversations as a new business owner, people really do want to see you succeed. And I love your story about, you know, that's how you started your business and you started your business in one of the hardest times to start a business, which means anyone can do it. Right. Honestly, I, I feel like it's, it's one of these businesses also that I've only been there a few years, but, I, I can't have enough staff. Like I just have so many requests and we do, so we do mobile treatments as well, which is always fun because you know, you get to travel all over different lakes and sometimes you get to, they'll pick you up in a boat and you travel to their Island. And like, so it can be, it can be a really cool experience. Um, but it's just, you know, as your name gets out there more, more and more people are contacting you. And like in the summers, I I'm just, insane like i i'm at the point now where I, I can't take more people personally like i'm just like see this person see this person they're amazing like you know and then they're getting busy and then it's like oh we're just booked for three weeks four weeks five weeks like it's crazy so it, it can happen you just have to stay on it because that's the other thing is a lot of entrepreneurs they start something and when it's not a wild raging success immediately they feel like they're doing something wrong and it's like no there there just is a growth period and you have to respect that and you have to recognize that it's not all going to be sunshine and rainbows you know yes absolutely so when it comes to um, where you want to go with your business and where you see yourself in five years, like, does it look a lot different than the way things are right now? What are some things that you're looking to do a little differently in the future? 
Yeah, I mean, so that's a really, really tough question because I feel like every year there's something new happening. And so even just in the three years that I've opened it, I have added extra you know, courses and education and credentials to myself. And then it's also adding new services to the spa. And a big thing that I have is that um, I ask my staff, like, what do you want to do? What are you passionate about doing? Because I'm not going to tell you to do, you know, eyelash extensions if you hate doing eyelash extensions, because A, you're probably going to be terrible at them. And B, you're going to hate coming to work every day. So it's going to reflect your attitude, which is going to reflect on your work. So mm -hmm. instead, what I've been doing is I actually just am... Um, my esthetician, if she's listening to this, or if she listens to this, we have to sit down and chat because I said, I'd like you to give me a list of four courses that you would like to attend as some education or whatever. Um, it could be something we do existing that you want to add on to, or it could be something brand new. I don't care. We'll sit down and talk about it and then we'll pick two of them and then we'll send you off to do it because wow. I can't pick it for you because mm -hmm. I, I know what I like, but that doesn't mean it's what you like. And if it's something I like, it doesn't mean it's going to be successful. When you have an employee that's excited about what they're doing, they will be successful and they will make money for you and they will make money for themselves just because of their excitement. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, there's a piece of me that doesn't know exactly where that's going to go. I mean, the goal would be to continue to have more staff and, you know, it is a bit of a roller coaster with the seasons where we are. So, I mean, in some ways it would be nice to be a bit more even, but at the same time, it's actually really nice to have a little bit of a quiet time in the winter to kind of, you know, reorganize everything and make a plan for the next year. So it is constantly changing. I would love to say I know, but um, I am not the type to be a perfectionist planner anymore. So I am, just taking a bit of a passenger seat in my life and allowing it to take me wherever it needs to go. Wow. I think that you're, you're obviously in a place where you've, you've achieved a lot of success. And I think it's really cool that you're not just like grinding and pushing for the next level at all costs. I think that's something that a lot of successful business owners do is they don't recognize the success they've achieved and they just keep looking ahead of what they want. And I was reading a book a couple of years ago about just growth for the sake of growth and how that is, it's very, like you were saying, it's very much like an addiction and mm -hmm. I definitely have it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think it's really cool that you're recognizing there are um, different seasons in your business just because of where you are located physically. Have you ever considered doing some business coaching in the winter where it's just Zoom calls with, you know, up and coming clinics around the world that need help with getting started? Is that something you've Stop so done. yeah so i actually do um just recently i i do some coaching but i actually do coaching for i mean i love the business stuff and i'm happy to do coaching for business stuff um but just the industry i'm in i've actually started to do more chronic pain and weight loss coaching because i recognize that chronic pain obviously is a huge issue um it's not going away anytime soon we don't have good solutions for it that are mm -hmm. easily accessible to a lot of people the healthcare system is not helping us out with it because they're not prepared to handle it they are not a long-term system they are literally based for you cut your hand open they can handle you you're internally bleeding they know what to do they mm -hmm. don't have the resources and time to be able to help these long conditions, this chronic pain. And so I just recognized that that was an area I really needed to step into and really help with. Mm -hmm. So I have been doing virtual coaching for that, but it's funny you say that because nice. I actually have been also thinking about how I can help with more career stuff because I've had a lot of clients lately who are making big career changes or are just in the corporate world and are struggling with hiring which we know is a huge issue. And it's funny because I had somebody saying, you know, it's hard to hire for this supervisor or manager position. And I'm like, well, what are you looking for? Yeah. And I find a lot of people in that corporate world, they're looking for a well, while they have X amount of years in the same kind of position. I was like, yeah, but that's not what the world is like right now. In our world, people don't stay in the same job for 15, 20 years. So chances are if they've been in that job for five, six, seven years and they're leaving that job, they may they, they're looking for a change they probably mm -hmm. aren't going to be happy long term in that same position right so they may be able to fill that role for you temporarily but you need to ask good questions as to where they really want to go because maybe it's something that your company can provide and maybe it's not 
Maybe you mm-hmm. need to be looking for somebody who's not doing that role, but has enough transferable skills to be able to slide into that role. And mm-hmm. you don't have to teach them the technical jargon, right? Mm-hmm. And when it comes to leadership, I always tell people, if you're looking for a leader, ask them if they played sports. Yeah. Because if they played sports, they had to play on a team. They had to be coached. Mm-hmm. They had to be coachable. You know, if they were mm-hmm. successful, then chances are they have some of those fundamental layers to be able to be that leader that you want. Right. That's awesome. That's really great advice. Well, thank you so much for all that you are sharing and have shared. Um, is there anything like that one big thing that you would tell yourself, you know, like 10 years ago, um, you wish someone would have told it to you and you can tell it to fempreneurs right now? <laughs> yes. My big thing is, do not let perfection paralyze you. It was something that paralyzed me for a long time. I, you know, like you always look back and, you know, you try not to have regrets, but there's things that I recognize that I should have tried and I didn't because I was worried about not being perfect at it. And perfection paralysis is a huge issue. It's uh, right up there with imposter syndrome. <laughs> So the the thing is, I have a beautiful partner now, and he really was one of the reasons I went out of my shell and I pushed myself to try things that are new because he wasn't afraid to look goofy, silly, or not do something well. And I didn't have that in my life previous. And so when I started to see that and I saw how many amazing things he was doing because he could do that, that's what I decided for myself. So if I was younger and I had somebody telling me, like, who cares? Just try it, you know? Don't be worried about doing it perfectly because... Nobody does it perfectly the first time. If you did, it's a fluke. (laughs) So just go do it. Yes. Megan's in the comments saying she feels you. (laughs) Um, I love that. Thank you for, thank you for that really important message about perfectionism. Um, Where can people stay in touch with you? Where do you hang out most on social media? So at True North Movement movement spelled mvmnt you should see us live here um you can also follow me personally at v-i-k-k-a-h i uh try and do some posts i am not the best social media poster only because to be honest if you're interested send me a message and i would love to chat with you because you get way more information that way anyways so you can go online you can see our services you know if you have questions about your body about your health about perfectionism whatever it might be feel free to reach out because at the end of the day we're here to help each other and there's no stupid questions right okay well i will be sure that there are links to both of those instagram accounts in the show notes and thank you so much for joining us all the way from the other side of canada the beautiful Muskoka Lakes area. I can't wait to check that place out someday. And uh, thank you again. And we'll just look forward to seeing where this all goes with you and maybe interview you again in a year or two so you can share the Why next not? chapter with us. <laughs> thank you so much. It was so much fun. Okay. Bye for now. Bye. If you want to get better at online marketing and online lead generation, meaning attracting the right people into your business, using free tools like Instagram and Facebook, then you're going to need something called MailChimp or something similar because you want to be able to give your audience a little taste of what you do for free. Now, this can look a number of different ways depending on your type of business, but I'm going to help you with all of it. Go to yycfempreneurs.com and you'll learn all about it there. I promise you'll be so happy you discovered me and everything I have to offer you. And uh, make sure you're on our email list so that you can get lots of free tips and strategies, flash sales on new courses and invites to workshops. Um, There's a ton of free education. There's also some really awesome opportunities to connect and learn with other Fem Printers. So I hope to see you over there. I'll see you back here next week for another episode of the Fempreneur Marketing Podcast. Bye for now.